Howdy folks, this is Justro at Metcalf Mills. On this video, I'm going to be sharing some past projects that I've done with you. One is a water wheel and flume that I built for a local mill here on a farm. And the other is a water mill that I built several years back from the ground up. I sure did enjoy building them, and I hope you enjoy seeing them. This little mill is in the county here where I live. And the old water wheel that was there was built out of yellow pine, and it was in really bad shape when I went to check it out. The steel post that supported the water wheel was rocking back and forth, so it was really unstable as well as the wheel was getting deteriorated pretty bad. The first step was to tear the old wheel down, of course, and then dig out a whole new foundation for the new wheel. The next step was to pour a new foundation with a catch basin and a spillway, and then form up and pour the piers for the new wheel. For the new wheel, I used yellow locust for the arms, and I used choice white oak for the rims, drum boards, and bucket boards of the new wheel. The new wheel was built at my shop outside, of course, because of the height. All the water wheels I build have a double rim, and that is for strength and durability. All bucket boards, fronts and bottoms, are notched into the rim boards. I love big wheels and I cannot lie. When finished, I rolled the wheel up on a trailer, strapped it down, and headed for the mill. Yeah, it's big, but it's round, so it'll roll good. The pit wheel was installed on the water wheel shaft before the water wheel was set into place. The pit wheel is the main drive gear off the water wheel shaft. It meshes with a smaller pinion gear, which gives an increase in speed. One of my favorite parts here are the hogs on the hillside behind the mill. The old flume was left so that the new wheel could be in motion before the old flume was replaced. Here, the new white oak flume has been installed with an overflow flume that goes down to the creek. I was commissioned to build this mill, and it was a dream come true to be able to do so. And it was the first project of this size for Metcalf Mills. All the lumber for this mill I milled with my sawmill. The framing, beams, and exterior were all hemlock, an exception of three locust 6x8s 
that can't lever to support the shed roof over the water wheel and flume. The water wheel is a Fitz design. The shaft, hubs, and arms were original Fitz wheel. The buckets, rim boards, I replaced with red cypress from Florida. The rock work on the mill was done by a local rock mason. The wheel is 16 foot in diameter and it has a pit wheel segmented gear on the back of the wheel that is 14 foot in diameter. It meshes with an 18 inch pinion gear which drives the main master shaft inside the mill. I disassembled the old wheel. It was sandblasted and painted and put back together piece by piece. Now on the Fitz design, one side of the spokes are marked, stamped with dots one through eight and matching dots on the inside of the hub so that you can match up which spoke goes where. And on the opposite side, the spokes and hubs are stamped with Roman numerals to know which side is which. I designed the mill so that all the gearing would be in the basement and off of the main floor milling area. If you look closely, you can see the old friction bronze lined bearings laying behind the new bearings on top of the pillar where the water wheel shaft is. When I installed the wheel, I used the old bronze lined friction bearings and the resistance was so great, it would take a whole five gallon bucket of water to get the wheel in motion. After I replaced the old bearings with the new seal type bearings, the wheel would turn on a trickle of water from a gravity fed garden hose. The main carrier beams for the water wheel I milled on my sawmill and they were 18 by 18 inch square chestnut oak. The foundation, pit, and wheelhouse were poured in two different steps. Then the carrier beams were mounted on top of the piers. One reason for doing this is the wood acts as a cushion between the bearings and the concrete for a smoother operation. The back porch of the mill has an adjoining corn crib for storing of ear corn and it is filled from doors up top on the very outside. It's accessed by the door on the porch and also two doors on the inside of the mill. The crib was later changed into a grain bin type storage for shelled corn. The back porch is decorated with panels on the handrail of corn plants and also panels on each side of the crib door of ear corn in the shuck. The wooden latches on the corn crib doors I designed and made and also the wooden lock that's on the main door of the mill house I designed and made. The lock, inner workings, and keys are all made from yellow locusts. And this design is based on a picture I saw in a book of some of the first locks used here in the mountains. The key has three teeth and when slid into the side of the lock and you lift up inside the lock there are three tumblers which the three teeth on the key lift out of notches on the slide latch so that you can slide the latch and open the door. from a pond by gravity. There's a gate valve on the main milling floor which allows you 
control as to how much water goes onto the wheel. Here you can see the only visible workings on the main milling floor, which is an eight foot wooden master wheel, which drives a belt down in the basement to the main line shaft. Here the wheel is free wheeling without a load. Remember, folks, here at Metcalf Mills, we like big wheels. I look forward to seeing you next time.